Hello there, and welcome to another numbers edition of Apple a Day. Today, I'm going to cover the Lambda function, which was added to version 14.4 of Apple Numbers. That version was released in April of 2025. I'll start off by telling you like it is, the Lambda implementation in Apple Numbers is just not very good. If you are familiar with this function in Excel, you're going to be disappointed, and here's why. Excel has a feature called Name Manager, which lets you take your Lambda functions and give them custom names, which can then be accessed from anywhere in your Excel document. So for instance, if you made a simple function to convert miles to kilometers, you could then name it to something like convert M to K. Then in a cell, you could just type in equals convert M to K. It would take a single parameter for the miles and then convert that value to kilometers. So if you can't use Lambda for creating custom functions, then what good is it? And if you're asking yourself that same question, you're not alone. First, let's take a look at what Lambda actually does in numbers. In this document, I've got two columns. The first column is a list of distances in miles, and the second column will contain the formula to convert them to kilometers. So I'll type in the equal sign to bring up the formula editor, and then enter the function name Lambda and press return. And here I have two parameters. The first parameter, which happens to also be called parameter, is the name of the parameter we want to pass to the calculation. You can actually have as many as 253 of these named parameters, all separated by a comma. Now, when I say named, I mean you can call them whatever you like. In my example, I have just the one parameter, and I'm going to call it miles. So I'll type that in right now, and then press tab to move over to the calculation. Like I said, I could have typed in another comma and put in a second parameter if I wanted to. For instance, if you were taking in width and height, you could have width, comma, height, comma, calculation. The calculation is always the last parameter passed to the lambda function. So normally a parameter in a function calculation would just reference a cell, meaning you could just select the cell or type in the cell ID like B3, for example. But in a lambda function, you use the parameter names. So I call this first input parameter miles. So if I enter in miles, numbers recognizes that as the parameter name that I already gave it. Then I'll type in an asterisk for multiplication and type in 1.609, which will convert miles to kilometers. So what's cool about this, you can use clear names to describe each parameter. It's not really a big deal when you only have one parameter like in this example, but if you have several and your formula is quite complex, this certainly makes it easier to read. The same goes for programming. It's important to use descriptive variable names so when you look at your code six months later, you can better understand what it was you were thinking six months prior. Okay, so I'll just press return to close the formula editor and I get an error. So if I click on this error triangle, it tells me that a formula can't return a lambda function. Hmm, well, let's double click to edit it and see what the problem is. Nothing really stands out except that we're not referencing a cell to which this formula will be applied. So if I were in Excel, I would use that name manager that I mentioned earlier to save this Lambda function and give it a name which can then be used throughout the document. But sadly, Numbers does not have that feature. So to make use of Lambda in Apple Numbers, we have to use another function called Lambda.apply. So I'm going to start over. I'm going to erase what I have typed in so far, and I'll type in lambda.apply and then press return. And you can see that this lambda.apply takes two parameters. The first one is the test value, and the second parameter is the lambda function itself. So the lambda function is embedded within the lambda.apply. So this test value corresponds to the first parameter in the lambda function. And if I had more than one parameter or additional parameters in my Lambda function, I would need to also have additional test values in the Lambda.apply function. The test values in Lambda.apply need to match the parameters in Lambda. But in this example, I have only the one parameter. And the purpose of the function is to convert miles to kilometers. So test value, I'm actually selecting the cell that I want to convert. So I'll click on this first miles cell. Then I'll press tab to move on to the parameters within Lambda. And here I'll once again type in the name that we want to call the parameter. I'll type in the word miles again. And of course, miles now is going to be taking the value from this first test value that we selected. 
and to repeat, if we had two parameters such as width and height, uh, then we would have two test values there, the first one referencing width and the second one referencing height. But here we're just using miles. Then I'll press tab to move over to the calculation. I'll type in the parameter name of miles and then an asterisk for multiplication and type in 1.609 to complete the conversion formula. So all we did was use the same lambda function as before, but this time it's inside the lambda.apply function, which is supplying the source value to the lambda function in order to run the calculation. I'll press return and I get a result. I'll apply this to the rest of the cells simply by dragging this handle down to the last row of the data. Okay, so that was a heck of a lot of work when I could have just done this. I'll just type in the equal sign on the top cell of the next column, select the miles value cell, type in the asterisk for multiplication, and then type in 1.609, press return, copy the formula to the other cells, and done. So that was obviously a lot easier, which begs the question, what's the point of Lambda other than to make the formula easier to read? As far as I can tell, it's there just for compatibility with Excel. If you opened up an Excel document within numbers that uses Lambda, it will convert the named function to a full Lambda.apply formula for each cell that references that named function. So initially I was very excited to see that numbers added the Lambda function. But at the end of the day, it's really not that useful unless you have a very complex formula that you would like to be more readable. Or as I just said, if you're importing an Excel document that uses the Lambda function. I do hope that the folks at Apple take the next step in a future release and let us create custom named functions using Lambda. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching. I'm John Martins. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode of Apple A Day.